Right, good morning folks, welcome back to the farm. It's about seven o'clock on a Saturday morning. There's many things I'd like to be doing more than being outside in minus four. You can barely see back there, it's just frozen fog and frost. But we've got the offer of help, so we're gonna try and get some fence posts in the ground, in the frozen ground. What we're after are the crazy heavy ones. So we've got the seven to eights and the eights to tens or something like that, uh, which are gonna be the gate posts and the strainers. I can't be taking the trailer down there. So I'm just gonna hope that they sit on the back of the bed of the truck and don't slide off the back, even though they're covered in ice. Alright, that'll have to do for now. That's not my morning warm-up. Uh, what's that? One, two, three, four, six, seven, seven. I could have got a couple more big ones on there, but there's an hour at least in that. The trailer's full of all our hedge plants. Oh, I better slow down otherwise it's gonna slip off the back. So Tom's here. Tom is busy for weeks on end, but he's managed to free up his Saturday morning, maybe a bit tomorrow just to give me a hand getting in some of these big ones and then I can carry on with the petrol driver and get all the small ones in, providing the ground's not too hard. Right, first delivery. This gateway's the end of the track that comes into the lake field. We've got a double fence, this hedge, which means, what does that mean? It means we need a gate post here. I'll rail the width of the hedge and then we need so uh, kind of a gate post and a box strainer there. It's a shame because that's only a short stretch. We're going to end up using four posts just to do that. We could just use rails, but I'm never quite sure which is more cost effective. Over here, this triangle is going to end up in a small paddock. So we need a strainer and then two smaller strainers to create a right angle box. And then here will be the beginning of a long run going a couple of hundred meters that way. So we do want a big chunky H here. I'm not sure what you can make out behind me, but this ground slopes down and it plateaus off. You've got this like small triangle down here. That gets really wet, stays wet. So I don't really want stock on it and I don't really need to fence it in the same way. So I'm thinking this triangle we can plant up uh, some trees in there. We've still got the perimeter fence that we've got along the back there. So what we'll do is we'll just bring, it means I don't have to have another turn down the bottom. We can bring the fencing along here in one pull It'll come through here. You can see we're gonna have a box strainer here to strain this bit. We'll have the same the other side of the hedge, but then it'll almost be like a U shape because the fence will carry on through, cut through the gap in this hedge. And in the future, when we fence the brook, that's the exact line it's gonna take anyway. So that fence will carry on through and then gradually go curve around, fence this field here. So we'll end up with a little copse of trees here. Along here, it's just a single strand of barbed wire. And then up there, there's just it's a footpath and other land. So we don't want them going that way. And there's a ditch there as well. So this curve here is what we're putting in. We've got to pull out all these old posts with the barbed wire on. And that's what's going to get replaced. So we need probably two turners here to hold that 
curve, it's going to go around nice and gradual, past that pylon, and then there's a really boggy bit up here, which I'm going to solve the bogginess, but I can do that after the posts go in. But let's work out, because this is a bit of a dog leg here, work out how many places we need to go and get now. What needs to happen is come to here, then we need to go up the bank, where you can see this barbed wire is, and then along the top. The efficient way to do it is to come along, skip all the soft ground, put a, put a strainer in here. But then obviously we're losing that ground, we're well, not losing it, but it would be uh, outside of the grazing. But it could be planted. I don't mind this sort of situation where people were sacrificing whole fields for woodland creation that could otherwise be used for grazing or crops or whatever. It's a sticking point and people have a debate, whereas here, poor grazing, nothing going on. There's some nice little saplings growing up anyway. If we were to bring that fence line up to here somewhere, it's better fencing wise, less materials, less waste, um, and we've got another little wild area that we could plant in there. So if we're bringing some more beehives down this end as well of the farm, that's like another good place we can fence it off. Didn't even spot that. The water's all frozen over. All right, the Christmas tunes are playing. We're uh, making progress. Next load of deliveries, I guess, uh, is these posts here. I'm going to try and get the triangle done because this is the one. I'd like to finish off everything in this field rather than start on the next one before we finish this one. It's very wise of me, I know. I want to create a bit of a turning area here. There'll be a triangle down there to plant up. Maybe even Christmas trees, let's think ahead. So I want to start kind of a gateway here into that triangle field. going down there and there are three strainers down there I got dragged into the uh, village Christmas fate. So Tom had an hour or two hours cracking on. He's got a load of gateposts in and strainers. So back to give him a hand. Oh, I didn't bring the strimmer down. You getting all right? Or? Yeah. Maybe in there. Cool. Yeah, especially them. There's some bigger ones as well. <laughs> yeah. They're fun to find a flat edge on, aren't they? <laughs> you have to like almost ignore the bit that's going in the ground. Yeah, start at the top. Yeah.
it's all good. We've done about 20 posts now. It's all uh, all productive when you've got the right gear. So we decided to do that, skip the wet patch and put the strainer up here by the oak tree. So it's gonna be, I mean, we've got a massive post going in now. It's basically a tree in itself. So this is just so wet. So that's like an eight to 10 inch post. We'll put another one and then that will come all the way across on an angle. Going in so quickly, I need to get another post on the go. So I don't think we need another one that size. We'll go one size down, which should be one of these. Uh, so all pretty similar. We'll go for this one. Sometimes you see this curve here, and you think, oh, it's. I mean, they're all like this because they're uh, acacia. But if you think about it, half of it's going to be in the ground, so you actually end up with a straight post. It's just harder to level. Right back again fourth load of the day now I've just got turners we're gonna try and get these in because these are all posts that are too big to do with the handheld petrol drivers so making use of Tom so while they're not a huge amount thicker uh, than a normal fence space these are kind of four to fives they're eight foot so it just means they've got a bit of extra strength if there's any kinks slight kinks uh, if they're any bigger if it was a bigger bend then we would go bigger again but most of these should be fine Right, one in, three to go on this stretch. So these are actually nine foot. These are what you would use as a diagonal strut. Uh, but we're gonna use them as turners. This basically means we're gonna have five foot over half of the posts in the ground. So it should be more than adequate to act as our turners. This is a really gradual turn anyway. And like I did on the track, I'll probably go around the back of the turner plus a post to the side, you know, to even out the uh, strain. But it's amazing, I don't know how long these have been in the ground, but they haven't rotted off and this is soft ground, so even these softwood ones have lasted well. Given in, I've decided to uh, work around the willow tree. Some of you might know this spot. This is a, it's a fallen willow tree which fell years ago, I think. And uh, kids play under it, got a little hammock and a campfire. So rather than cut it, because it's still living, rather than cut it off, you can see the trunks right up here in, in the hedgerow, which is perfectly in line. We're gonna um, thin it out and or just thin out the shoots go to the point where tom's banging in that strain there and then i'll rail under all these branches shoot net and rail and then we'll start again up here this 
one will probably pull out but I'll need to chainsaw it there uh, and then we should be able to start and run all the way up to the far end then all for a picnic type every time we stop and start again it's another uh, well it's four four more strainers so that's 120 quid um, so not ideal and then of course railing under there as well <laughs> this bit's a bit more stubborn we're going to see if we can shift it downhill a bit and then start the strainer up in there Tom and I have just worked out that we need another 14 strainers to finish the outside of the field. I think we've got that many, but that probably is more than I can carry on here, let alone lift. Uh, but we'll give it a go. Let's go hard or go home. I don't know what the bed capacity is for this thing, but or all the tailgate. I think we've maxed it. Looks like some sort of medieval battle wagon. Well, I doubt you can see me, but that was a good day well spent. We've got, and a short day at that, we've got nearly all of the big strainers in. There's about eight more to do along the left-hand side. Priority now is not getting stuck in the mud. Well, it's another day and it's another type of weather. It's absolutely miserable. At least it's not cold, but I think I prefer the cold than the wet. We've dropped off last night as it was getting dark. We dropped off the strainers in all the corners. I think there's four more required for a run up there. But we wanted to work out if we've got enough to get round the lake. There's got to be a small wooden gate. I'm going to do a little jetty next year. There's going to be a small wooden gate for access for that. Um, machine that we use for clearing the lake because that might happen uh, every few years so we need to have access but apart from that it's going to be stock net all the way around i've got some slightly chunkier posts to go around this open area because i may in the future rail it over the netting but for now i think we just need to work out where we want our strainers a pair of strainers either side and a pair of strainers down here so that's eight big posts we need four for the top so we are running low I think that's a good place to stop actually. Ah, I told you it was easier yesterday. We found our soggy patch. This is all where a leak from another water course has come through the hill, uh, through the side there. And it just, ah, I need to get some drainage done. But anyway, Tom will be here in 10 minutes with a Land Rover and a tractor. So we'll uh, sort that out in a minute. 
and while we're up here on the uh, the high point you can see the end of the water is basically the last trees then it turns to this marshy area which I don't mind and I like the idea that it's there because it's quite it's always full of birds so we just need to work out if we're going to fence around it or through it I think we'll go through it that's what it is now if it ever gets really boggy down here in the winter I'll electric fence it off so the sheep don't venture in but rather than take it out of the equation altogether because in the summer it does dry up and we can get the sheep to go through it. services. Alright, one, two, three more box trainers to do. Time for a drive fire gloves. I don't think that was going to happen. We've definitely got to sort something out here. I know that this isn't our problem. Well, it's our problem, but we're not the cause. It's leaking through from beyond there. But maybe I just need to put a drain in or something. So we'll get it in here, and then there'll be a series of rails that will come down the side of the track in a little bit, just to make sure that this is easily accessible by truck or tractor. And then from here we can strain the actual fence so this will just be rails and netting where are you thinking where the point is okay so at the end of a cold wet and soggy weekend we're, we're almost there we've got nearly all the strainers apart from the bit around the lake so massive massive thank you to Tom because there's no way that I would have been able to get those in uh, well not without a lot of hard work and an auger and several several weekends of my life so what was only probably a day's work um, split over a couple of days we managed to get all of those in and now I can start with the wire getting all the stakes in position and then I can get some of those in especially that triangle at the end of the track I'll maybe start on myself if Tom can free up a day himself then I think we should probably jump on that and see if we can uh, the two of us go around and just get all those in with the tractor it's amazing what the tractor is able to reach so i don't think there's too many places that we can't get to but obviously we've got that petrol machine as well so big thanks to tom i'll leave his info down in the description as always if you want to check out more of our fencing videos then i've put a playlist together there's some from last year over in the secret meadow and now there's my little uh, rendition of fencing which is uh, what DIY farms all about I guess so getting the track done has been the latest fencing project and you can see how I did over in the playlist thanks for watching take care and we'll see you next time